All right, welcome back everybody. This is Dave with Alum House, and today we're gonna to be talking about how to set up monitors. All right, so to set up monitors on this X32 console, we've got a few things to prepare. Uh, typically what we're gonna do is use mix buses on the right-hand side. And so if we come over here and hit the second button down, we see we've got a couple mix buses. Now, you'll notice here that the first four are set up uh, with the pre-light lit up. And, and that means that they're set up as pre-fader. Uh, we'll talk in a minute what the difference between pre-fader and post-fader is. But these four are set up as pre-fader. And then we have uh, these next four that are not lit up, which could mean that they're post-fader, could mean that they are, are uh, set up as groups. We're not quite sure yet. Then we, if we look, click nine through 16, we have four more that, uh, that are just not being used. They're not set up, they don't have any color. This is pretty much a, a blank scene. This is how I start out my blank scenes. Um, but so these are also not set up as pre-fader, but they're available to be used. So we're gonna come back up here and let's talk about what pre-fader does. Pre-fader, uh, allows us to have a mix go into the room. If I turn up some of these faders, you can see I've, I've got some, some information coming in here. If I turn up some of those faders and I turn my main volume up, now I have some sort of audio going into my room. And these faders right now, if I turn them down in a pre-fader monitor, whatever I do in the house does not change what goes to the monitor because the information going to, uh, going to the monitor happens before this fader. If it's a post-fader mix, like my five through eights are over there, then if I make small changes, that would be impacted in what goes out to that monitor. Here's the example of the difference. Right now in my live stream, I have a post-fader mix going to my live stream and what that allows me to do is mix for the house. I might turn this one up a little bit or this one down some, and that change will be reflected at a certain ratio into my stream. And that's what I want because I have one sound engineer. But if I set up a monitor for a musician on stage, let's say this is our drummer and the drummer's in the back row, you know, the back behind the kit and, and I make changes in the house, well, that being, that would, that would mean that their monitor would continue to change during, during the worship set, and that's just not ideal. So what do we do? We set it up as pre-fader. Uh, and after this section, I'm gonna show you how to make the appropriate changes up here in the screen to determine which ones are pre-fader and which ones are post-fader. But for right now, we have a little bit of a mix here that we've built. We'd have no idea what it sounds like because I'm not listening to it but I'm just pushing some tracks from my laptop from a, a previous show back into the console so that we have stuff to work with here. Um, now, what I can do, uh, and typical here, channel one is kick. So we'll start to use channel one as our example. So to get started with setting up the monitors, I do recommend pushing these, uh, these faders here to zero or as close to zero as you can get there. We're gonna hit the select button because we wanna change or alter that mix bus. And then we're gonna hit the sends on fader button. Now notice that all of these faders from our front of house mix now have been zeroed out. We can still see that the indicators are flashing, meaning we have audio, but all of the faders have zeroed out. The reason for that is now these faders are no longer mixing for our main output they're now designed and designated to mix for this monitor or mix bus one. So now if this is the drummer, he probably doesn't need the kick drum. He doesn't need the snare drum. Uh, I just happen to know that these are overheads. I usually give him a little overheads uh, because that will give him a, a kind of a feel for the whole kit. And, and then maybe this is the bass and he, he needs bass. Maybe he needs some guitar in there and these are vocals. All right, so this could be the mix that's built for, in this example, this drummer mix bus one in your monitor or wedge, it doesn't matter necessarily. But 
you've now built a mix. Well, if I hit sends on fader, all of the faders flip back to our front of house mix. Okay. And anything, any change that I make here is not going to be reflected in this because it's set up as pre fader. Now we can, uh, we can go and, and if I hit sends on fader again, because it's selected, now I can select mix bus two. And we'll see that now we could set this monitor up as something different. This could be a different, uh, maybe maybe this does need some some drums and bass, and it's a vocalist, and maybe they want to hear a lot of themselves and then a little bit of something else. These are my vocal channels. And so now, if you look, we have two different meters going, even though they're monitor mixes. So this is setting up a, a mono, so not stereo left and right, but a mono mix that's going to go to a monitor to be heard by a musician on stage or some somebody else, somewhere else. So this is the basics for setting up a, uh, a, a monitor mix that we're going to send somewhere. Now, how do we connect these? Well, you've got a couple options. So on the back of this console, let's say the easiest way to do it, these mix buses by default are designed to go out output one, output two, output three, okay? And they're designed uh, to go out those outputs through an XLR connection. And that's the easiest thing to do is just plug your XLR cable uh, out, of, out of Mixbus 1 for this uh, drummer's monitor that we were, we were using the example. So you can plug the XLR cable out of Mixbus 1, uh, sorry, out of output 1 on the back of the console right into their in-ear monitor setup, put that transmitter really high, get a good line of sight to the drummer, and as long as they turn their in-ears on, they should be good to go. Um, now, let's say that you only have a quarter inch output. Well, then we get into routing. So uh, routing, what we would do is we would come up here to routing. All right, so we're zoomed in on the screen here. Now, if I hit routing, then I've got a couple different options here. We've got inputs, we've got card, and, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll over here to XLR. So our XLR outputs are preset. So these are on the back of the console. These are preset for output one through four, five through eight, nine through 12, 13 through 16. And what that does is that takes all of these uh, mix buses that we could route to output one, two, three, and four um, by default. And it sends them out the XLRs. Now, if we, if we keep scrolling, we get to kind of the output section here of this console. And what we've got is, an, is a list over here of all 16 outputs, listed one through 16. Now what we can do and or see is that output one on the, uh, uh, the XLR output, the physical output on the back of the console is, is set up to mix bus grouping and then mix bus one. So that helps us determine if we needed to change it uh, we, we could make it uh, any, any, anything else, a matrix out, or we could do direct out for the channel comes in and then goes directly out. We've got a couple different options, but again, for this example, for monitors, we're going to stick with mix bus and mix bus one. If I go to output two, you'll see that it automatically is set to mix bus two, three, four, five. Uh, as we go down, these are typically preset for all of these monitor, all of these mix buses until we get to 1516 on the full console. The full console 1516 is set up for your main left and main right. Now if you've got the smaller platform, the, the compact, the rack, uh, or the producer version of this console, then you've got only eight outputs, which means that seven and eight are designated for your main left and rights. The good thing about that console the smaller platform is that you still have all of these outputs available to do some really unique things. We're not going to dive into it in this con in this video, but you do have the ability to do some really custom routing and get a huge bang out of that console, even though it's a smaller platform. So where do we want to tap this? Uh, if I come back up here to monitor one, you see we've got a tap option here. And typically we're going to tap, um, in this case, it would be, if we do pre-fader, it me on, 
on the tap, it means that the actual fader from Mixbus 1 will not determine or change the volume output. So what I like to do is do it as post fader, like that, which means that my, my fader for Mixbus 1 will adjust volume. Now this is important because when your drummer is sitting behind the drum set, uh, they can use their phone. If you've got a router hooked up to the console, they can use their phone and an app, a free app, to control their own monitor mix, which really makes life so much easier. You don't have to yell back and forth uh, from stage to the console or, and, and have the sound man set up your monitor. So they can just uh, connect wirelessly to, uh, to the soundboard. They can make their own changes. And if they need more volume, they could actually just push the fader up and you'll see it move, which is kind of neat. Uh, but that doing post fader on our tap is, is going to be ideal uh, for, for the monitor setup. So we've got a couple different options here. If you want to check out uh, what all the specifics of these uh, plus M or post EQ or, or pre EQ plus M, what those are, you can check those out. Just go on to Behringer's website and they've got some really basic explanations in the manual of this console, um, the user manual of, of what those are. So let, let's talk about how we actually set these up as uh, pre-fader, post-fader. So from this section, I'm gonna hit the home button and I'm gonna select channel one for our mix bus. So in the top left corner, we can see that it says mix bus one. And what we've got the option to do is we can mouse over to the config tab. And here, now this is version four of this software um, which gives you some really nice, uh, unique features. But what we want to do is select here. We've got this selection over here where we can do uh, pre-fader or post-fader. Okay. You see subgroup is an option at the bottom as well. Subgroup is a different scenario. Pre-fader, uh, it's selected, and that means that, uh, again, any changes you make to the faders for your front of house mix will not make changes to your monitor. I'm going to go over to mix bus two here. I'm going to change this one to be post fader. So I can just select post fader. It says, do you really want to make this change? I say yes. And now I have a mix built on mix bus two, but if I make changes to my main front of house mix, it will change that monitor mix going to mix bus two because it's post fader. Okay. Now the benefits to doing post fader and pre fader mixes is that you've got the ability to do some dynamic control. We could actually turn on a compressor here uh, by hitting this and we could start to maybe do some light compression on the monitor just in case things get out of hand. We don't hurt anybody's eardrums. We also have the ability to do some EQing on this on this monitor mix, which is really nice. So you can see in this mix, got a lot of low end, but you know we know that there's some pretty standard things here that are going to be uh, maybe a little overbearing in this this four to five hundred range is usually uh, pretty dicey. We've also got the ability to come way down here, and most monitors are not going to do this low, low sub bass very well. So we can do that. And then if we needed to do anything for adding some clarity up here, maybe on the vocal diction, um, you know, just to get some more clarity in the ears, we could do something like that. So it's really nice pre fader and post fader mixes. You've got the ability to do some EQ and compression. All right. So we're back out here at the full console. One of the last things I want to talk about is setting up a reverb specific to your in-ear monitor mix. Now, everyone uh, knows what a dry vocal sounds like, and it doesn't get any better when you shove headphones directly in your ears and listen to a dry vocal. It's even worse, coming from a worship leader myself, it's even worse when it's your own vocal that's dry, direct in your head. It's just hard to take and listen to. So a little reverb can go a long way for your musicians on stage to help them get a really good sound. Now, some people have room mics and room mics will obviously do the trick for you. A uh, quick, easy and free way to do it is by using a reverb. So if we come down here to bus nine through 16, um, 
what I've done is set up a reverb here. This is just by default uh, a hall reverb that's in the effects here. Uh, we would find that by coming up to the screen, hitting effects, and looking what the effect number one is. So again, this is a hall reverb. You could go through and change it to be the vintage reverb, which I really love. Uh, you could be a, a plate verb, whatever you want. But effect number one uh, comes in here on 13. So what we do is we tell what to send out. So just like our monitor mix, we're gonna send a certain mix into this reverb. So when I hit sends on fader, I have built a little mix over here. And this is uh, just a general mix of instruments that I need in reverb. So maybe I've got some drums in there, I've got some acoustic guitar, I've got the vocals in there, going into one reverb. So what we want to do is we want to set up this basic mix that's going to go into this stream, into this uh, bus number 13. Bus 13 sends it out into this reverb. It makes a stereo return, which comes back in the board on this left side. Now we're going to hit sends on fader after we've built our mix. Now we're back to our house mix. And we come in on this third one all the way over here, the third one, third layer. And these are our effects returns. Now, this is crucial. Don't miss this. You don't want this reverb coming into your front of house mix. So to, what we have to do is select this return and then deselect the stereo bus for it. Okay, when stereo bus is selected, it can go into your room mix. We want it only to be for the in-ears, so we turn that off. Now you have this, this whole little uh, effect that's, that's happening here. We've got a mix going into a reverb send, goes into the reverb, comes back in here. It's turned up. Where does it go? So what we're going to do is we want to add this reverb into the in-ear mix. So we're going to come back to our mix. Uh, in this example, we were using the stereo mix. It'll work with stereo or mono. And then, so then we hit sends on fader. And now what we can do is turn this up in their ears. They can turn it up in their ears and they get just enough reverb to, to broaden the spectrum in their head. So if you have room mics, you're, you're going to have room mics that are pointed on either side of your stage and it's going to be getting left and right stuff and they can pan it left and right in their head and that's, that's all good and well. But again, the, the free way to do it, set one reverb designated for your in-ear mix, your monitor mix, and then you can add that reverb in uh, into their heads. This does work on a, a mono mix, obviously not quite the same because you're not going to have the stereo width and a mono mix, it's going to add depth. Okay. But, you know, listen to it in headphones, solo it in headphones and see what it sounds like. But this will really make your musicians sing better, play better, which is going to make your job as a, as a mix engineer so much easier. All right. So that was a quick run through on monitor setups. Uh, obviously we went through a, a, a mono monitor. We went through a stereo monitor. Uh, we added some reverb. We've built some mixes that go to them. We've talked about pre-fader and post-fader and, uh, and that you can also use these sends, these mix bus sends for other rooms, whether it be a live stream or a cry room or a nursery, something like that. Even, even your foyer, you could send a, a, a mix to, you know, another area in your building if you needed to. So uh, I hope this has been helpful. If you've got questions, leave them in the comments below. I respond to all the questions and comments that I get, and I would love to help you take your next steps. So give it a thumbs up, give it a like, and we will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.